example 10.9.4. Applying the same method as in the previous examples, I'm going to start by separating the variables so that anything to do with V is on one side, anything to do with T is on the other side. So I'm just going to write out the equation. So we have V on both sides of the equation. I'm going to take my first step of dividing both sides of the equation by v squared. So on the left I've written 1 over v squared multiplied by dv by dt. Another way I could have written the left hand side, I could have written dv over v squared dt. That would still be okay. But I tend to try and keep the dv by dt as a multiple at the end. It's just the way I write it. So that's one step in the right direction. Now I've only got v's on one side of the equation. However, I've got both v and t on the left hand side. So my next step is to multiply both sides by dt. This time I've written the left hand side as dv over v squared. I could have written 1 over v squared times dv. Both, both mean the same thing. Now I've reached a point where anything to do with v is on the left hand side. Anything to do with t is on the other side. The minus and the 3 could have gone on either side because they are independent of v and t. So I decided to leave the minus where it was, leave the 3 where it was. And crucially, neither dv nor dt are in the denominator. So now ready to integrate both sides. So on the left hand side, I'm integrating v to the power minus 2 dv. On the right hand side, integrating minus 3 dt. The left hand side will become v to the power minus 1 divided by minus 1. The right hand side, minus 3t plus a constant. We have information which will allow us to find the general, sorry, the particular solution here. At the moment we have the general solution, but if we sub in t is 0 when v is 10, then we can find the particular solution that passes through that point. So v is 10, and that happens when t is 0. Let's tidy this up. That means c is minus one tenth. Now I've got the value of c. I can write down the particular solution. So the particular solution, and I'm going to tidy this up. I don't like the denominator of minus one, so I'm going to write it as minus v to the power minus one equals minus three t, and then our c value is also negative, so minus one over ten. The question didn't tell me how to leave my answer, so that will get full marks in an exam. But I'm just going to show how you could simplify this. First of all, every single term is negative, so I could multiply both sides by negative 1 and it'll look a bit neater. That's already a little bit neater. What if the question had said, give your answer in the form v equals a function of t? It didn't, so I didn't have to do the following, but what if it had said that? Well, I've got a bit more rearranging to do now. So v to the power minus 1 is actually 1 over v. And next I'm going to show a common error, so that you never make this error. So do not do the following. Here's what you must not do. We've got three terms here, one on the left, and two terms on the right. Whatever you do, don't just go and do the reciprocal of each individual term. So the following is wrong. That is wrong. We have broken the equation. We've broken it. How do we know? Let's take something we know that is true. Half plus a third, if you work it out, is actually five-sixths. If we go and do the reciprocal of each term, we get 2 plus 3 is 6 over 5, which we know without a calculator is definitely not true. So that shows we have broken the equation. 
So please don't ever do that. So what can we do if we want the answer in the form v equals? Well, we can still do the reciprocal, but we, you must do the reciprocal of the whole of each side. So crucially, that means on the right-hand side, we end up with 1 over the whole of the right-hand side. Now that is correct. So the error was when we did the reciprocal of individual terms. That's what broke the equation. It's fine, however, if you do the reciprocal of the whole of the left-hand side, which here gives me v, and the reciprocal of the whole of the right-hand side, which gives me that. I'm going to do one more step, because I don't like this mini fraction that I've got in the denominator. So we've got a fraction within a fraction. And I'm simply going to deal with that by multiplying the top of that fraction by 10, and also the bottom of the fraction by 10 as well. There we go. Oh, let me try that again. So 10 over 32 plus 1. That was if the question had said, give your answer in the form v equals. If it doesn't specify what form to give your answer in, then this line here, we had full marks there. But very important algebra steps at the end in case the question wants answer in a particular form.